Joe Live. This is Smoking Joe for MikeStogies.com. I'm here with Gary Griffiths of Emilio Cigars, and we're in his humidor at his shop in uh, Newark, Delaware. And Gary, I wanted to ask you a couple questions. All right. Um, how long? How long have you been smoking cigars? What got you into cigars? Started smoking cigars uh, about 40 years ago uh, when I was in service, and uh, just always enjoyed it. Didn't didn't really take it terribly seriously way back then. Uh, you know, my serious interest in cigars really didn't start until uh, about 10 years ago when I sort of decided to semi-retire and came to work at uh, this shop, just intending to uh, be here eight to 10 hours a week just for something to do to get me out of the house. But uh, I pretty quickly realized that uh, it was a cool business and I really liked it and uh, I wanted to learn a lot more about it and do a lot more with it and so it quickly became a uh, an unretired retirement. So in a way it quickly became an uh, uh, obsession like golf. But yeah, 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 it, 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 can, it can get you and, and not let you go. So uh, and you've branched out, how many stores do you own total or the, run I should say? Uh, I manage the 24 stores, not all of them have uh, walk-ins. We have uh, nine that have walk-in humidors. And of course over time our objective is to continue to expand the, this number of stores that have walk-ins. Uh, you know, some of the stores are obviously focused more on cigarettes and other tobacco products. But uh, as you can see, this, this one here is a little special because it's closest to home and it's where my office is. So it's my baby. Now I'm going to give you a little sweep around to take a look at his baby. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to ask you was, is, um, how did you get into blending your own line of cigars? Um, was it just the passion of uh, your experience with cigars and, and the industry and, and running a shop that uh, you decided to take that leap? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I, more than anything, I, I started at it as uh, oh, a means of educating myself more about tobacco and, and, and uh, how different types of tobaccos affected flavor and different primings on the plant affected things and I just wanted to know more and so I began traveling Central America and the Dominican Republic pretty regularly and uh, of course as, as you know with this business you know uh, these guys are, are willing to give if you're willing to accept and you know you meet so many nice people who, who will very graciously spend time with you in their factories and so I availed myself of that opportunity and I began spending more and more time in factories. And um, it didn't occur to me until about four years ago uh, when I first met A.J. Fernandez that I might actually maybe be able to uh, have a blend. And not, I was just wanting to educate myself. And we were working together um, and he was relaying a story to a few of us about something he had accomplished with tobacco uh, that, you know, he was proud of. And uh, the few other people that were in the group basically were saying, you know, oh no, that can't be done. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is A.J. Fernandez. If he says he did that, he did it. And so I listened and thought, and I looked at him and I said, you did this, didn't you? And he got a big smile on his face, and he looked at me and, and said, uh, you know you tobacco, how come you know make cigar? Which had never occurred to me before. And for someone of his caliber to have that confidence in me, um, I just thought, you know what? By God, let's give it a shot. You're also a certified tobacconist too, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's it, it just started this... I just wanted to know anything I've ever done in my life. I've always wanted to know as much as possible about it, and it just came from that. So, what was your first blending? The first cigar first cigar from your cigar. First blend I did was um, the Maduro in the uh, Serie H, and that was done at the Placencia factory, um, and that was followed right after by the uh, Series H Sumatra, 
and then the first uh, thing AJ and I did together was was AF1, uh, and then the uh, the undisclosable factory we did the Grimalkin, and then back to AJ, Fair enough. <laughs> and then back to AJ for the AF2. Uh, now, now obviously, I guess you took an active role in the blending and all that. What what kind of process is that to go through to come to the final uh, blend that's going to be uh, put out there to the public? There are. Yeah, I, I think people work in different ways. I just kind of work in a way that's comfortable to me. I uh, First off, you rely heavily on them because they have a lifetime of experience. And, and let's face it, in the limited amount of time I've done this, there's I am by no means a master blender. But generally what I do is uh, I'll actually diagram out a cigar. The tobaccos, I think, will accomplish uh, what I'm attempting to do um, and the flavor changes I'm looking for. And this all comes from experience with dealing with the different types of tobacco. De dealing with the tobacco. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll send it to the factory I'm working in and then, you know, a few months will pass by and they'll say, okay, stuff's ready to smoke. And uh, especially with AJ, usually what will happen is uh, I'll go down, I'll smoke essentially that exact same base blend concept that I've come up with, after which he'll get a big smile on his face and hand me another cigar and say, okay, we changed this to be some, <laughs> you know, and, and but, I mean, how do you question that? Uh, so, so I can, I guess my perspective on it is I can blend a cigar. Um, and in some cases I've blended a pretty good one. Um, they make it exquisite. They they do what it takes to really, they bring it up that notch to it. really make it something special. Yeah, so that I always believe in credit where to do. I mean, without guys like that, you know, a guy like me just cannot possibly. And a guy like me can't possibly enjoy that either. So. Exactly, exactly. And, we, and the other thing we do too is, um, while I'm at the factories, I'll often play with tobaccos. So, for example, a, a limitado that's coming out this this spring derives completely from my having been in a factory and picked up a handful of tobacco and stuck it in my face and smelled it and thought, oh my God, I have to find some way of doing something with this. This is fabulous. So sometimes that happens. All right, I'm gonna, uh, going forward to 2012, I know that you just come back from Nicaragua, uh, from Esteli. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to share with anyone on Mike Stovey's uh, coming up with the Emilio brand? I understand that uh, you can't disclose everything, so but well, I like you to, to share. I, I, I like to dribble it out there, it's, and that's more for my entertainment mm -hmm. than anything else. Well, we're all chomping at the bits. So. But uh, yeah, there is a uh, a new the next new thing that will come out will be the uh, the uh, AF Suave, which will be in the obviously AF, which means it comes from Abdel Fernandez's factory. Uh, which is a very mild, sweet, smooth uh, Connecticut cigar, um, Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper. That will come out. That will be available in a few more sizes than I traditionally do. Um, that will be followed shortly after by a release of Grimalkin in two new sizes, uh, which will be Corona and a, a one-time run of Lanceros. Um, and then after that, there will be, from the undisclosable factory, there are two more blends coming. And then one after that from AJ. And then just for giggles, we'll confess that uh, I will also be working in two additional factories that are all new to me oh, okay. this coming year. Will they be in Nicaragua or will they be in another country? Or can you not even say it's fine too? Uh, there will be one in Nicaragua and one in Honduras. Okay. Well, Gary, I really appreciate you taking time out because uh, I know that it's busy. You're also in your shop. Uh, so I really appreciate the time you took. I do have one more question that Mike from Mike Stogies has asked me to ask. And if you'd like to reply directly to him in the camera, that's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take a step back because I don't want to not kick. Uh, the question is, so how do you like your flashlight? I have no response whatsoever. <laughs> Gareth, thanks for taking your time out. Right, Smoking Joe from Mike Stogie. Pleasure. All the best. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas.